Hello there, people of the internet. There's a little bit of confusion towards the cores of bullets, you know, their make, their composition, why they are the way that they are, and what it is that those actually are supposed to be doing. So that's kind of what we're going to be covering in this video. So I have a video link that I can send to people who have questions about this. All right, so I guess we're going to go ahead and start off with the most common sort of bullets that you're going to see. I'm not 100% sure if this is actually what it is that I'm going to make claims of what it is, but I'm pretty sure, and even if it's not, this is going to be what represents it. Most bullets that you're going to find on the market are going to be lead core jacketed bullets. In this particular case, we have a nickel jacket on this bullet. A lot of people will say that it's just a solid steel bullet because of how it looks. It is not. This right here is a Turkish round. That is a nickel jacket over lead, or it might potentially be over steel, but just for the sake of this video, we'll say it's over lead. Now, the reason why this is done is because lead is cheap, and it's dense, and it's heavy, easy to mold, low melting point, like it's just a really good option for making bullets, because you can make a lot of bullets for not a lot of money, and you can mold them very, very easy, melt down the lead at very low temperatures, etc., etc., However, there are situations out there where having a uh, lead core would be less beneficial than having something like a steel core round. Sometimes steel is just more uh, cost effective depending on what country we're talking about, what time period, the resources they have available to them, etc, etc. That being said, most of your steel core rounds, despite the fact that they are a steel core, uh, they're not like an armor penetrating round or anything like that. They might be a little bit better at penetrating harder materials than a lead core round, just because steel is in fact harder than lead, even if it is a soft steel, which most of these bullets are going to be made of. But it's not intended for any sort of armor penetrating sort of situation. Uh, it is more or less made for cost savings and cost effectiveness, depending on what the country has available to them at the time. So... Both these bullets, assuming that we're talking, like, let's just assume that they're going at equal velocities here. Both these bullets are going to perform about the same, whether they're lead core or steel core, unless they're hitting, like, a hard surface like concrete or, I mean, even if they hit metal, both these are going to basically deflect and bounce off that metal uh, about the same. But there's very, very little difference between these two just because of the types of material that are inside the bullet. Uh, assuming that these are going at the same velocities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like, this is, this is just for the sake of argument. 762 by 54 rimming, 8mm Mauser. This one's going at, like, 3,000 or so feet per second. This one, maybe 2,800. So, there is some disparages... Di 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 differences? Yeah, that, we're going to use that word. There's some differences between the rounds, but just for the sake of argument, let's say they're going at the same speed. So, both these are going to do basically the same exact thing on target. They're going to poke a hole inside of it and basically go through and through. Not unless they tumble and yaw while inside their target, in which case they might transfer a little bit more energy and you might see some more damage. Uh, in the situation like that, the steel core is probably going to hold up a little bit better than the lead core. Lead core might flatten out a little bit, but again, you're not going to see very much of a difference. Now, where the big difference comes from is if we have something like a soft point round or a hollow point round or something like that, these sorts of bullets are made to expand. And the reason why they expand is that increase in surface area increases the amount of energy transfer onto whatever target it is that they hit uh, in a shorter distance. Not only does this mean less over penetration, but that equates to significantly more energy transferred onto your target because there is more surface area, thus doing way, way more damage to your target. So whereas something like a full metal jacket lead core round would poke a hole right through the target, something like this right here, this soft point round would expand and that expansion would dump way more energy onto the target, might not even come through the other side of the target, depending on how big, how big the target is, but that hole that it creates inside that target is going to be way, way larger than a full metal jacket round, in theory, assuming that we're talking about proper expansion, and assuming that we're talking about a full metal jacket round that doesn't like tumble through whatever it is that it just hit. Now, if we have a soft point round and a steel core on the inside, the steel is not going to expand the same way that lead would, and that's one of the reasons why we don't see things like that. There are some cartridges out there, like say M855 green tip rounds, which have like both lead and steel inside of them. 
Uh, that lead is basically there just to add mass and weight to that bullet versus the steel. Um, the steel going down range is more or less to add as a, or act as a very, very mild penetrator, which is one of the big arguments behind green tip, whether or not it's actually armor piercing or not, which it very much is not, especially by the standards of today's armor. Now there are very good armor piercing rounds out there. This right here is uh, M2 ball 30 out six. This is black tip ammo. And this is a 164 grain bullet, I think, if memory serves me right. Moving at about 2,800 feet per second. But the core of the bullet is a tungsten core. And that is really, really good at piercing through uh, any sort of armor. As a matter of fact, this stuff right here is extremely good at piercing armor to the point where there are certain laws and regulations uh, out there behind armor piercing ammo like what we have right here so whereas something like this right here these soft point rounds which would expand upon impact of their target if they're hitting something hard because of that expansion and the soft metals that's hitting that target you're not going to get a whole lot of penetration versus something extremely hard and solid like these tungsten rounds which hit that target let's say a steel plate or something like that these are going to punch through that steel plate a lot more effectively than something like lead. Now, some bullets don't even have cores. Like these right here are copper jackets over a tungsten core, copper jackets over a lead core, uh, copper jackets over a steel core. Essentially, they are outside versions of bullets covering inside versions of bullets. And the reason why that is is because the copper is going to be softer or a better material for... Uh, uh, digging into the rifling of the barrel of the firearm that you're using and as a result of that you're going to get less wear or less leading onto your barrel and you're just going to have better long-term accuracy and life of that firearm copper is just a really good way to go now some stuff like i said does not have a core or anything like that this right here is a solid copper round this is a tumble upon impact round from a 380 it's not designed to expand or anything like that. It is just designed to tumble whenever it smacks into its target, basically immediately going like this and going sideways into the target to transfer as much energy as possible. Bullets like this right here, they don't rely on expansion. They don't rely on increased surface area in that sense. They rely on essentially tumbling through a target to transfer that energy versus just poking a hole through it like you would with a full metal jacket. You might get some tumbling from that full metal jacket, but having a bullet that's actually designed for it is going to be a better option. The reason why these are solid copper is because one solid bullet is going to hold itself together a lot better than something that is like two different materials that are molded together. And I use that term uh, just in a way so people can understand what I'm saying here. Two different materials that are molded together into a bullet uh, that could separate upon impacts at high velocities. If you have one solid bullet that is just one solid mass, then the odds of that bullet separating are significantly lower because there's nothing to separate. It's just one solid hunk of copper. So there you guys go. That is my overview on different things to look at whenever it comes to the cores of bullets. And I don't think I have anything else to add to this. So I'm going to go ahead and do the outro. Thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. See you on the next episode. I've done this.
Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garen. <laughs> it's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.